What do you do when you need big sheets of foam and you don't have a lot of money? You build a slicinator. For my kayak build, I need big sheets of quarter inch thick foam for my core material. Now they make four foot by eight foot sheets. That's the biggest that I can find. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the four foot by eight foot sheet, cut one in half, splice the, the two halves with two other sheets to make 12 foot by four foot sheets. But the problem is this foam comes in two inch thick billets. Now, I could have gone with Roacel or with Divinacel because they come in quarter inch thick sheets. It would have been really convenient. However, those foam core materials are very expensive. So what did I do? I'm going back to my roots with my old RC aircraft building days and we're gonna use uh, High Load 40. Now, High Load 40, if you're not familiar with this, this is an insulation foam. Uh, it's used in, in the walls of homes. Um, it, it, you buy it by the sheet, at, usually at an a insulation contractor. You can't get this at Home Depot. This is not the same insulation foam that you can get at Home Depot and Lowe's. The stuff you get there is typically 15 PSI foam. And it's a very, very lightweight, low density material. Uh, they also have the, the expanded polystyrene, which is different. It's like the beaded white stuff. You don't want that stuff either, it's even worse. It's not a good structural material. In fact, the, the, I used the, the 15 PSI for my kayak paddles. It worked pretty well, but if I, if I could go back and do it again, I would absolutely use High Load 40 or High Load 60, which is even higher density. So rather than the 15 PSI compressive strength that the stuff that you get at Home Depot has, this has 40 PSI compressive strength. So it's not quite as strong as, as Roacel for a little bit less weight than Roacel. Kind of makes sense. High Load 60, if you can get it, is even better. It's a higher, higher strength, a little bit higher density, but it's worth, the additional, uh, it's worth the additional weight, in my opinion, for the durability of your, of your resulting laminate. The problem with this material, though, is that it comes in two inch thick billets. And we don't need a two inch thick billet, we need a quarter inch thick billet. So that's where my friend Tom comes in. Tom, about a decade ago, he, he showed me this really cool contraption he built. He called it the Slicinator. I'll throw a link in the description to his, his description of it, but basically all it is is he's got an inclined table and he's got a wire stretched across it and he runs a current through that wire. And while that current is running through that wire, it heats up, it's called, it's called a hot wire. It's commonly used for cutting uh, polystyrene foam. And then he just lets gravity feed the billet of foam through this thing to slice it into a thin sheet. His was pretty small. He was making small ones for little RC gliders. I need to make a really big one for a four foot by eight foot sheet that we need to cut all at once. So how am I gonna do that? This is kinda heavy. We're gonna use melamine. Now melamine used to be about $25, $30 a sheet last time I bought it. Because we're in the middle of a pandemic and massive inflation, it's really expensive right now. But I'm gonna use two sheets of this. I need two of them because I need room for the, the foam to slide from the up the hill side to the downhill slide. And you need the wire in the middle. So I need two sheets of this just to cut a four foot by eight foot sheet of foam. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna build a frame with some two by fours to support this thing. I'm gonna lean it against my tool chest and I'm gonna use this as my table for my slicinator. Let's get to building. I gotta move it back now. The other thing is that I can't do this in my shop because it's 16 feet long. My shop's only 15 feet long. So in order to build this, I'm in the garage. So I apologize if the acoustics aren't very good for this video. That's why, it's because I'm in my garage, which is untreated. So I'm doing the best I can, guys. <laughs> I'm doing the best I can. Let's get to the build.
Okay, so we've got a working table now for the foam to slide on. Now we just need to figure out how to cut the foam. So for that, we're gonna use a hot wire. This is a feather cut system. This is a feather cut bow. You can make your own out of a two by four and some, some aluminum rod if you'd like. But what I'm using is a, uh, a feather cut because I was able to borrow one from a friend. So what, what it's gonna do is we're gonna slide this underneath. So on either end of this bow, we've got these rods, these metal rods. I'm going to string some stainless steel fishing leader from one to the other, put some tension on it, and then I'm going to hang that right here, suspend it a quarter inch above the top of my surface. How are we going to set the Z height though? How are we going to set that quarter inch height? Well for that, see Tom had a very clever mechanism for setting very precisely what height he wanted it to be at. In our case, we only need it to be a quarter inch. I'm making quarter inch thick sheets and nothing else, and it doesn't have to be that precise. So what I'm gonna do is I just cut a quarter inch uh, steel dowel into a short section. I'm gonna hot glue it right there onto the table. The bow is gonna set on here, and then I'll have a screw that goes in right next to it to catch it so the, so that the wire can't slide down the table. Hopefully that'll work pretty well. Essentially, all you're doing is you're running an electrical current across this wire, which then the wire has resistance, and so it's going to heat up. It's going to create heat. You're turning electrical energy into heat energy. As it gets hot, it melts through the foam, and you can slice it into a nice thin sheet. Now, to make your own power supply, there are lots of tutorials on the internet for how to do this. I borrowed one from a friend that's basically a transformer and a dimmer switch. The last thing I want to talk about is this, micro balloons. You don't want to wax this surface or do anything that, like that to reduce the friction um, to help it slide better because wax will contaminate foam. You don't want to, you don't want to be applying a, applying a release agent directly to your core material. That's a bad idea. Micro balloons, however, um, they actually provide a pretty slick surface. They roll underneath the foam and uh, it should lubricate it enough that it slides a lot more easily and it won't contaminate the foam so it'll still be good for bonding to later. My voice just cracked. Um, not exactly what I was 
going for. Yeah, that's bad. So we're looking at about almost three tenths of an inch of waviness in that. That's never going to work. All right, time to do some research. All right, so I went on the internet to get some advice, uh, asked around on a couple forums that I'm in to ask what the heck I should do about the, the undulations in my, in my cut. And overwhelmingly, I got two responses, more heat and a different wire. I decided to switch the wire first. I switched to a nichrome wire. So this is, uh, I believe, 30 gauge nichrome wire. I think that's 0 0.012 inch diameter. Um, that did not make a difference by itself. So in, I then went to a, a larger power supply to put more heat into this thing, and that was the ticket. So this is my first cut. Beautiful quarter inch sheet. Got a couple of little teeny undulations in here. It's not too bad. I might turn up the heat just a little bit more, but uh, this is a usable result. So we're gonna run with this and better go cut some more foam. Well, after about six hours in a sweltering 100 degree garage, I have four foam sheets, quarter inch thick. Are they perfect? No. Was it worth the effort? Uh, that's a tough one to argue. If I were to go back and do it all over again, I might just buy some quarter inch Divinacel. Probably would have saved myself a lot of hassle, a lot of headache, and really I don't think I saved that much money by the time I bought all the equipment. But we had fun, and I'll use these in the next video for making our carbon fiber panels for the kayak. So if you want to keep an eye out for that, click the subscribe button, click the bell if you want to get notifications, and I'll see you on the next one.